Um, I do have a, a bio of Jake, which I'll read out if you don't mind. Just so uh, those of you who don't know who Jake is, I'll just explain. Jake Pelledry represented Filton College and Dean's Crusaders, in addition to turning out in the Aviva Premiership A-League for Bristol Rugby since 2014. Jake is an English-born Italian rugby player who plays for Gloucester Rugby in the Aviva Premiership. Jake represented Italy under 20s during the 2014 IRB Junior World Cup. He then joined Hartbury RFC during the 2015-16 season, where at senior level during the 2016-17 season, he had a breakthrough campaign that has played his part in what has been a tremendous season for the runaway leaders in League One, where he helped them to gain promotion to the championship two years ago. In March 2017, Jake signed his first professional contract with Gloucester on a three-year deal ahead of the 2017-18 season. In January 2018, Jake was named in Italy's Six Nations squad. On the 17th of March 2018, Jake made his senior international debut for Italy in the 2018 Six Nations Championship and is set to head to Japan for the World Cup this September. So the first question I've got, our, our introduction to, to Jake started at Filton College. I want to go back a few steps now to when did you first start rugby? Was it minis? And just give us a background of your school progress. If you don't mind. Yeah, so I was um, you know, thrown in. Um, my dad was a like a rugby player back in back in the day, um, and as a little kid, I kind of got thrown into it, um, you know, willingly. But uh, at the same time, he would drive me there, make sure I was training. Um, and it's, I was actually at Clifton Rugby Club um, at Bristol. That was where I did my minis, um, and that was just you know like you know the touch kind of thing. Um, and I really enjoyed that, and then um, you know, progressing through that, we moved to Mary's, a little bit older, St Mary's, which is um, again in Bristol, um, and then from there, I uh, got into the school stuff. So I was at, I was at Colston's, um, and well, previously before that, at Down School. Uh, so it's all this is all in Bristol um, at the Down School, and then uh, to Colston's, and then uh, as as mentioned, Filton, which, and then from there, as mentioned, uh, Dings, uh, and then Hartbury, and then and, and through to to Gloucester. In somewhere like the Colston's and the Downs, I know Downs is a great um, prep school, the three of the Colston's are seen as a great rugby school to develop as well. What was your exposure to, let's say, strength and conditioning, programming, nutrition, anything through that school there? Was there any? Uh, no, so basically there's pretty much none. So, uh, although Colston's used to be a very rugby school, when I went there, it was kind of, I think, it was just, uh, just when Alan Martinovich had left and he was a big advocate of the rugby side. Uh, but it was literally just, you know, do your own thing. Um, and as a 16 year old kid you don't really want to do what you have to do uh, you don't really want to do the exercises you want to do uh, that are good for rugby you want to just go in there and bicep curl and, and do a few bench press and sit there with your mates and see who can do the most that kind of thing um, that, that that's the kind of what you get you know even at colson's because I, I don't think we ever actually had planned sessions as a team I and mean, it was always one of the funny days when we went to like when we went to film we started like mingling with the bristol and uh, having to get the wooden bar out to do the squats because you know some like none of us like knew how to do it because we'd never been you know showed that kind of thing and it just it just highlighted that you know that that kind of transition would be a lot smoother if you just knew like there were some boys that would <coughs> go there and like, actually start you know to squat and, and know how to do it whereas we'd always stood there with wooden poles because obviously the the bristol um you know coaches and, and strength and conditioning couldn't let kids that didn't know what to do do any weights as such it all has to be technique and I remember doing that for a couple of months before anyone could do any sort of weight um, how was that progress is that difficult for you psychologically and, and that? I think yeah you know <clears throat> it's like um, you know you, you, you kind of like not segregated off it's not you're not being penned away or anything but it's like you, you're looking across the room and you're seeing people that what you want to do and you feel like you know you feel like you can do that because you know it looks easy but to a technique. I mean, even like to now, people are still learning techniques of what to do and, and what to. As a young kid, it's it's like you know muscle memory and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it was it was tough because you feel like you can do it, and that's when your injuries come in. Like I know you, you know the, the kids and whatnot, but they still get like injuries, like soft tissue injuries and whatnot, and doing things wrong. So for for yeah, psychologically, it's kind of difficult because you think you can do it, but at the same time, you know you don't want to, you know you can't because of injuries and whatnot. We've seen this a lot in schools, and I've been a coach as well. We've found that parental pressures or external pressures around the individual have an effect on your progress, like through school or going into academies or becoming elite. Give us a background on your, your family setup and how 
you were pushed through um, that you were saying your father played at yeah. a high level, was it? Yeah, yeah, it would well at the time, yeah. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, so he, yeah, he was, um, yeah, so he, he basically took me everywhere, make sure that I was, um, you know, turning up to all these training sessions and whatnot. And um, you know, it'd be like, you know, uh, Tuesday evening or a Thursday evening of training, it'd be like, oh, you know, do I really want to go? And then Dad would be like, yeah, we're going, get in the car. So that's, that's good. All the time, it's like, um, you obviously, you, sometimes you don't fill up to it, but you know, looking back on it, you're so grateful that someone, because these people, like, these kids can't drive as myself, and, and he'd always take me to like, you know, county trials and, and whatnot that were, that were further away from what we were used to outside of Bristol, and he'd always make sure we were there. Um, so for us, it was just like, uh, we knew that Tuesday, Thursday, and then all of, uh, it was Sunday to begin with at minis, but then Saturday, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the rugby day, that's when we wake up, that's when we go, uh, the family would come, so we'd leave early with Dad, go to the game, because we had to warm up, and Dad would just obviously go in the bit, uh, <laughs> go and buy the pint or whatnot, but he'd, he'd make sure he was there early, and then you know, my mum and my uh, grandma and granddad would come up later on and watch the game, so that was a kind of, we knew that we had a set routine through. The last presentation, the last presentation we had before was on nutrition. How, you know, and, and, and the influence of the family on nutrition. How did you manage your nutrition? You know, did you manage it at Constance? Uh, no. No. <laughs> what, what did you do? Uh, so yeah, it was just like the first, even even like recently, the first bit of nutrition I've ever had, like advice or anything like that, would be going into Gloucester. That's the first bit of anything I knew what to eat or what not. Uh, you know, my my dad obviously was you know a player back and like back going back but there was no nutrition then or, or what like they might have people might have known what to eat i'm not saying there's an excuse for it but it, there was no like so what i'm trying to say he couldn't give me the advice that i needed nutrition wise because he didn't know it himself um and yeah so the, the first taste of actual nutrition um yeah, pun, pun, but the first bit of nutrition we got was was going into gloucester you, you obviously came through the Hartbury setup um, with the team, but also Gloucester are on the site of Hartbury College. They now are taking kids in from uh, after GCSEs at 16 all the way through. Is there a better control? Do you see much of these kids coming through? And they ha they have better control now of diet and supplement and training and those sort of things. Then? Yeah, I think I think uh, Hartbury is definitely is taking very seriously. They they've um, yeah they they like pride themselves on. You know, I didn't actually go to the college or the, um, the university there, but I know for a fact that they, that they going through the, the, the um, RFC side, which you mentioned, that they are basically a professional outfit. They, they take everything seriously. They, they do everything they can to make sure that when they, because they have so many people that step up into a professional environment there, that they, there's not a shock when, when, they, when they go into that. Um, so that's what they kind of pride themselves on. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. Moving through now, you're now gone through. Was there any Harpy with the academy for Gloucester essentially? Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. So the academy set up. How how did that? So you've taken a step from you from school into college to get into an academy set up, play at you know Div One and then into Championship. How were those steps as a progression for you physically, mentally, um, and as a person? Uh, so I had a big um, kind of knockback as such. I think most players do. But um, you know, I was, as I mentioned, like Bristol. That's where I'm born. That's where I live. Um, that's that's where I kind of moved into. That was a natural pathway from Filton. But they actually, uh, at 18, said that there wasn't a place for me there. So as a kid, like with Dad being so you know enthusiastic and whatnot, that was that was tough. But um, it was kind of the knockback I needed. So that, that's when I you know started training real hard. Uh, that's when I went to Hartbury, and that's where like we were like. You know, I'll be gymming properly, trying to take it really seriously because I wanted that opportunity because I got that taste of it at Bristol Academy as a youngster, seeing all the you know the older players, um, and that's that's when you know I tried to work really hard. And luckily, with the two seasons at Hartbury, something came of it at Gloucester, so it was kind of like a motivation for me to try and prove to the people that said no to me um, that that I could do it. And We've seen over the last eight or nine years the development of elite sport, the introduction of technology. Into it. You're monitoring every single thing yeah. you around it, the GPS devices, the power testing devices. Do you see that as a positive or do you see it as um, Big Brother is watching you? Do you, do you, see, how, how do you, how do you do uh, I, I, I quite like it because it's a measure. So I like the fact that um, the one we use, and I don't know the name, so you might have to there jump in here, but the, the machine that sits on the floor and then you pull it and it's got yeah. the, the wire up. Yeah. Uh, that um, is amazing, even though I don't know its name, but it's got the iPad <laughs> and then you, you, we do a lot of squats with it so we can see our power in terms of 
you know how, how fast you're squatting and they can change it to, to any exercise they want but we, we mainly use it for the squats um, to see and, and the rows and the bench rows so we can see what, what I quite like about that is if I go in there and squat I can see where my level is at and then if I go in there and do it again I, may, I, I want to improve on it but if I'm down I can see that I'm down and maybe why is that uh, and personally and I can see why am I not back to where I was or what have I done differently like nutrition, hydration so I can see that, and we also use the like the CMJ mats, um, the jump mats. We use those pretty much every session we can, because uh, that's a big measure of power for, in terms of jumping, and, and obviously we're a pretty much power-based you know sport, so that's that's big for us. And both recovery measures as well. Yeah. So if you are down, they're exactly that. Put you off the session. Yeah. The GPS device do you use that in training as well? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. 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 Do you yeah, get feedback on that? Yeah. So they, they put all the uh, the meters that we do in a session, uh, so they have like. The coverage we do in a session, so that's just jogging and distance covered, and then they have high speed meters, which is uh, eight, no, 60% of your jogging. So when you jog, you've got your speed, which is measured in meters per second, and then you've got your very, uh, you've got your high speed, which is above 60% of that, um, and then oh no, it's not your sprint speed, sorry. So 60% your sprint speed, and then you've got very high, which is 80%, and then they stick all that data up on the board. So if you've been slacking in training, you're up on the board. <laughs> um, and and, and, and that, that runs throughout, so there is a competitive element through it as well, whilst the bus is for you personally, but there's a team competitive element. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I mean, the, the S&C doesn't go, you've had a rubbish session up there, why? But it's there, we don't really discuss it, but it's there, everyone can see it, so it's, yeah, it's there for a bus. Um, leading through now, you've got pre-season cow, pre-World Cup camp starting, how does that look for you? What What is the Italian World Cup campaign? Um, so it's... We've got uh, a big block of training, which actually starts Sunday. Um, so I fly out for three days, but unofficially, because I'm not meant to be training with the five weeks, so it will be just to watch. Um, and and then it actually starts on the, like the, I think it was the 8th of July? Yeah. 8th, 8th of July, which is the Monday. So that's our first week um, of, that, that'll be tough, because that proper, uh, that'll be like fitness, like uh, pre-season. Um, and then we've got middle of July off, they're back in at the end of July, and then it's all the way till October. Then, um, obviously, we've got preseason games, but we're still in for that. Um, <coughs> and then we fly to Japan on the seventh of September until whenever, whenever it finishes. Really, Who's yeah. your group? we've got Namibia, Canada, uh, South Africa, New Zealand. That's <laughs> yeah. 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 The first two started all right. <laughs> what, what, do you, what are you looking forward to doing out there? And I, I know a lot of guys have been out there and done trips so far. Have you been there at all? Yeah. Uh, we actually went there last summer, yeah, on tour. Um, yeah, it was good. It was really, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough climate to train in. I think, I'm not sure that obviously their seasons are different, but the, the time we went in June, it was basically like training in a rainforest. Like you, you've got, you can see the mist and well, I'm exaggerating a bit, but you can see like it's real like clammy, like the humidity is through the roof, um, and it's, it's tough to train in. But in terms of Japan itself, it's it's unbelievable, and um, obviously with the World Cup there as well, it's going to be really good. Huge buzz in Japan, just right. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I want to what kind of traits did you find in a coach that you really admired before that? So what kind of made that coach special, what you really liked about that, and what they did to make him a favourite coach, or what yeah. you liked about it? Um, just like the enthusiasm as a kid, this, um, as a kid is also, you don't, like the enthusiasm the teacher comes across in the sport, because when, you, when you're playing a sport, that's all you really care about is obviously your studies and whatnot, but when you're on the field, that's all. So like the enthusiasm of the teacher, and, and what, what I didn't like was a teacher that would just say the negatives. So like be maybe a negative, because they need that to, to improve, but also positives and um, you know, surrounding the negative with, with good things that would make them feel, because essentially they're young kids that, well, I was a young kid that, um, you know, you don't want to hear negative things, but at the same time you know you need them. You get some coaches that different approach, everyone's got a different approach, but some, some coaches might um, you know, just shout, shout at you, and then that might not be your best way. So some coaches would take you aside, like away from everyone, and just be like, this is what you need to work on, I think you need to do this. And obviously, you know, modern day now, everything's recorded, like training-wise, and um, like they go back and show us, because sometimes you know, players might be like, well, I did this, so, well, there's no argument, it's on video. How would you say that you've uh, changed how you deal with the monotony of training so intensely for so long. You see it as your job, so that's, that's, that's what you do, you turn up, you know you've got to train hard, you know if you haven't got a game on a weekend that Friday afternoon is going to be brutal, so you, you know that that's, that's going to happen. Um, I guess it's just the mindset and you know, you know it's like at 16, 
when I didn't, it wasn't my job, it was just a hobby. I, I enjoyed having fun. I enjoyed, you know, I didn't enjoy the fitness side of it. I don't think many people do. But, um, you know, that's that because it's not your job, that's what you, you don't want to do that. You want to go out and play condition games or, you know, play, you know, rugby or whatnot or bulldog. Yeah, like going back even younger than 16. Um, but yeah, so then now it's. Now it's because it's a job, and you know you're turning up, and you've got to be better, and you've got to be, at the, and you know you've got to do it because you've got to be at the top of your game to, to get the place in the team. So yeah, I think it's just a mindset thing of job and then a hobby, kind of, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. <laughs> you yes, yes. Did you play other sports when you were younger? Uh, so uh, yeah, with the uh, the dance school in Colston's, it was um, rugby, and the second term was sevens and hockey and cricket as well. Yeah, so I played I played all of those. And then you started focusing around 15, 16. Yeah, so when I went to Filton, that's when I solely focused. So it's all the way up to year 11, which I don't know what age is, maybe 16, 16, yeah, 16, 16, 16 yeah. yeah, so that's when 17, that's when I uh, solely went to rugby. Do you I think, think that helped? I, I really enjoyed playing other sports, and I actually missed it when I went to Filton because although I was mainly focused on rugby, I didn't see like cricket or hockey as I wanted to play hockey, but what, what I did was it was my fitness for rugby. So like, hockey <coughs> is basically. When I played it, probably rolling, probably get frowned at here, but I, I found it a bit like football. So it's like running up and down the whole time. And you, you obviously, you've got a stick, but, it's just, but you're running up and down the whole time. And I was just using it as my fitness. And cricket, say, well, it's less running, but I was just using it as, as my means to, yeah, because obviously in the summer and stuff, you're at your sevens, but in the summer, you don't do anything like that. So um, that, that's how I looked at it. Sorry, you just mentioned pre-season and fitness. Is there a particular test you're not looking forward to at all, like anything like a brown uh, or something? So he, uh, Dan Tobin, our gym man, won't specifically tell us because what we'll do is we'll go out and do it. So what he doesn't want us to do is to get good at the test. So he's got, I think we've got three tests, uh, th well no, two tests, and then one that Italy love doing, which is the Bronco. Uh, that's the one that Italy prefer doing. Um, and then we've got the 1K test, which is just a rugby pitch 10 times. Uh, but you've got to get it in certain, obviously you've got front row, middle five, back row, uh, and then, but it's literally back, back and forth ten times uh, under a certain distance, and then we've got the yo-yo test as well. So. I've got another one, that's alright. Kate, just in the, the two years you've played, um, everyone's saying that rugby's advancing, it's getting more physical, it's getting faster. Have, I know you're going on the pitch and just melting boys every week, but like, have you noticed the difference? Like, has it got harder even while you've been, even in this two-year period? Uh, what I would, just just from the um, from the Hartbury to to Gloucester to start with was yeah. a massive transition. I think the boys are more athletic, so I think you'll come across bigger men lower down the seniors because they're just you know coming out of Witherspoons and <laughs> jumping straight the pitch. So they're bigger men, but so it's it's, it's more physically there, but in obviously it completely changes in terms of premiership because everyone's conditioned and everyone's running around a million miles an hour, and, you know, running into you and throwing their shoulders everywhere. So it's it's tough. It's yeah, and then you're just facing athletes rather than rugby players as such. So it is yeah, it's a massive step. Yes, but from a recovery standpoint, um, I know that sort of seasons are getting more games slotted into them and stuff like that. Is there anything that uh, teams are doing now that they're really, really pushing or? Free range of what you select in terms of recovery. Uh, it's it's what they don't. It's very individual to the player, so they don't like to say you do this, you do that. Like I know, for example, the ice baths after a game, they're not compulsory because they know that some people prefer it, some people don't. It's it's again, it's uh, it's difficult because at our level, it's pushed on the player, and that the player will do that because um, that I know, for example, that I need to recover because Monday's going to be you know. Not, not tough, but Monday's going to be training, Tuesday's going to be tough. So I need to do that myself. Um, you know, it's, that, that's why it's difficult for the you know the younger generation because you don't really want to say get in the ice bath because you know you can't force them into something they might not benefit from. What we what we do at Gloucester, I suppose, is we have to have, after a game like you you have to go and get a massage at some point just to flush through. Um, and you know they they know that we have all the um, hypervolts, hyperspheres. Uh, and all the bands and stretching, and then uh, mainly on Mondays and Tuesdays there'll be stretching slots, um, all that kind of stuff. So it's all it's all there. It's just individualised to what you want to do. Thank you, gents, ladies. That's our time up. I thank you. If that's all right. Hope you, I'd like to say thanks to Jake for this. He's been amazing. For this.